So I keep growing, singing. Happy Saturday, everybody. Guess what? I think I'm hoping that um, remember we had some technical issues uh, a little while back. I think I got it figured out and it was just a setting that I had. And you know what? Today's the day for no issues because today is National Quilting Day. So if you're not quilting today, I don't know what you're doing. You're out of sync, but let's get you on board. So um, we I've got a project that I have been looking at. It's been in my wish list queue for some time. It is the where is it? It's the wind socks pattern. And I thought, you know what? National Quilting Day is an awesome uh, it's an awesome holiday. And if you most quilters know that uh, it's already National Quilting Month here in the month of March here in the US. And I thought it's a celebration. It's a community that is so huge and encompasses all kinds of walks of life you and I included. And I thought, well, why not do something that is a little bit celebratory? And I thought, well, a little, a little ahead of the game, let's do some 4th of July because uh, who doesn't need fireworks in their life? And by the time July runs, uh, runs along, I'm going to be like, oh, I, I'm, I'm, it's already gone. So I don't have a 4th of July project. So this year I'm doing it early. All right, so before we get going, I would love to check out and say hello to all you crazy kids that lo that joined the live stream. Uh, so let's uh, do Rob's roll call. We've got Angel. Uh, hello, Angel. So nice to see you. Uh, and Angel over at... Um, Angel, uh, the scrappy angel, how could I forget? Uh, she has spoiled me rotten and I can't wait to start working on a project uh, upcoming. I'm going to show you some of her uh, fabric that I bought from her store. So you ought to check out the scrappy angel. Uh, we've got Trand. Nice to see you, Trand. You were at the Zoom, uh, the Zoom social last night and we are apparently, we are twins when it comes to hang, hanging mobiles. We love them. Uh, Susan, not only do we have Susan, but we have her sister. She's a twin. We've got Sally who is in the room and there she is. Hello, Sally. It is so nice to see you. Uh, we've got Yoan Downunda over at the Go Ahead and Make Me uh, uh, 
channel here on YouTube and he's actually one of our moderators and he's going to keep you guys in line. <laughs> of course, we do have Mr. Rob DeLine he, of um, Mr. Rob's uh, Roll Call. He is all things crafty, all things precision, and I couldn't be happier uh, to know you virtually because even though we li both live in uh, the Seattle area, we've never met. And then we've got Jesse Roussel. Hello, Jesse, and he's up there in Canada. Nice to see you. I know that he is uh, very busy with all of his makes. And actually, I think he had a talk this morning that I'm gonna have to catch up on. I didn't have time to, to find it, but I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, that they recorded that. Uh, but look at everybody, movers and shakers. And he had a question that says, how's the tread chicken going, Angel? Well, that doesn't apply to me, so why am I reading it? <laughs> so we also have, did I get everybody? I think we may have gotten, nope, we have Diane, uh, Diane Andronico, and so nice to see you. It's lovely, and she says, hello, all. So, yeah, that's going to be, um, <laughs> that is going to be everybody. Oh, we also have, wait, Susan Shady. Ooh, she must be a lady. <laughs> nice to see you. So, okay, so uh, let's get into it. Let's start the show and get to business. Welcome to The Quilt Stream. My name is Chip Connor. I am your host and this is the intersection where the love and passion for quilting intersects with community and we are going to be on this journey together today. Um, and I'm trying to reach out to you every Saturday. It may not always happen, but for the most part, we're gonna we're gonna have you a uh, little a little so along that we do uh, every Saturday. And you know, the best way to use this channel is like let's let just get into your zone. Start cutting and start sewing and start cussing and drinking and doing whatever it is that you do while you're sewing. But you know it's a lot of fun and especially let us celebrate National Quilting day and there is a um it's a little thing that people like to do i don't know if you've uh, seen over on instagram but people are actually celebrating national quilting day and a good way to do that would be um by and i'm going to show you my screen some people actually go and they want you to um post a, uh, a picture on instagram and then you can have your quilt hanging outside your house Unfortunately, here in Seattle, it is not, it is not sunny at all and it is not going to, I don't want to put a, 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 one of my lovely quilts over the balcony just to have it get rained on. But that's one of the ways that you could possibly uh, celebrate National Quilting Day. Another way is that you could meet up with some friends like we're doing today, together virtually or you know maybe in person. A third way is that you could possibly give a quilt to a friend or a loved one uh, and just say, hey, I'd love you to be the recipient of something I I think is fabulous and you know what a caveat on that is that um, when they're gone and you're still around say I want that quilt back or if it's going to be for the dog bed tell them do not give it to the dog give it back to me but <laughs> I know it's supposed to be you know you, you give things in the spirit of being um, generous and you know loving but you know come on hey we spend a lot of time and money on the, our quilts and people need to understand <laughs> these are not for children to drag in the yard or dogs to, it's not a dog bed, you know, hey, get to know it. <laughs> All right, so that is National Quilt Day. I would love for you to tag a quilt that you're hanging outside your house, even if it's only for a minute, and then tag me in that. So you could do hashtag National Quilting Day, uh, and then also hashtag The Quilt Stream, and I would love to see you showing your quilting pride with love. All right, second thing is reminder. We have the... Um, 
Adventurer's Compass Quilt Along. It is starting one week from, to, uh, from today. Next Saturday on uh, March 26th, we are gonna have our kickoff meeting. And I think we've got roughly two dozen people and I'm so thrilled about that because have you ever been in uh, a quilt along and it's just like there are not just dozens, but there are maybe a couple of hundred people. And it's really hard to find, you know, a sense of community amongst so many people. You kind of find, you find yourself being a little bit uh, anonymous and that's the benefit. We're doing um, the Quilt Along, and that's again hosted by, uh, co-hosted with the Curly Seams, that's Tracy and Emma, and then also Stuart over at the Wool Patch. And we have, we have a lovely community that we're uh, we're going to jump into. So uh, don't forget, uh, you're going to need to purchase. Uh, we're working on Mariner's Compass, and that is using Robin Ruth design patterns. And if you go to RobinRuthDesigns.com, uh, you can look first. I, my suggestion would be is we'll look through the patterns first, see what really sparks your interest, and then from there, once you know what pattern you're after, then you know which book that you're and uh, quilting ruler that you're going to need. Um, so I have a fat, and did I pull the right book? No, I didn't. So we go, we have a fat compass, which you're going to need the ruler that you can kind of see. And then you're also going to um, have the option that you can go with a skinny compass. And these are all the ones I'm showing you are 16 point compasses. And um, this is the skinny version or you can do a 32 point compass and it mixes a little bit of both uh, the rulers that I've just shown you. Now you can go as adventurous as, they, as you want or, and I'm telling you, you can go with a really small compass all the way huge Mondo uh, compass. And the lovely thing is, is that because this is a technique that Robin uh, Long has designed, um, we're all going to be sharing in the adventure together. You get to choose whatever pattern it is, but at the root of it, we're all going to be working on the same technique. So, um, yeah, the, the sign up link is in the show notes and I would love for you to join. Next week is the kickoff. So we're just going to get to know each other, have a little party. And then the following Saturday, we're going to have two training sessions and God love her, Tracy, uh, between Tracy and Emma, I believe they're gonna be doing all of the uh, the session trainings. We have two that are available and I'm gonna be along for the ride because I still haven't done a practice one yet. I haven't di dipped my toes. I have been so busy. So I'm gonna be that student that says, uh, question, question. And she's gonna say, you, you with the bad attitude. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't do his homework. Uh, but no, if, you have, if you've already uh, joined and you haven't started, uh, you are in the right space. Um, there's no time, time limit on when you finish your compass quilt. Um, it's just along for the ride. It's gonna be two months and I'd love you to join. So third, uh, third agenda item would be, I would just love to say thank you for our moderators. We have some lovely folks that dedicate themselves to just hanging out during the live stream and they offer, um, they offer that guard gate against any of the bots that come in and try to interrupt the room for the live chat. So I appreciate you. And they're also, sometimes they're able to answer a question that I may not see during the live stream. So um, always reach out to them. We've got Yoen from Go Ahead and Make Me. Sometimes we've got Tracy and Emma over at Curly Seams, Stuart the Wool Patch. We've got Susan. So yeah, I absolutely couldn't. Um, do it without them. They're not making any money on this. So I'd love you to jump over onto their ch channels and just say, hey, hi, I'm a new subscriber and you know, get to know them as well. It would be lovely. And I just got taken to task. I saw the, the, the note come in here that says, Tracy says, yeah, Chip, do your homework. Well, you know what? I'm a busy man. I'm a mover and a shaker, Tracy. I'm doing what I can, but you know what? I may be late, but I'm going to bring the ship in. I promise you that. <laughs> so another person that we saw, I saw sneak in was Paul Church. Thank you. Uh, it is nice to see you. And of course, we've got Fizz, Fizz Bradley. She is one of my favorite peeps. And, you know, we've just got a really lovely squad of people. So I'm glad you guys are here and along for the ride. So that brings to us to today's topic. 
and the project that I'm just starting, and that is a free pattern on um, Andover fabrics. So if you guys aren't in the know, um, you can go to a lot of manufacturers, whether it's Michael Miller Fabrics, uh, you can go to Andover, and the list goes on. So for a lot of the times, if you go to the fabric uh, manufacturer's website, you can look for all kinds of project ideas because they, they give away so many free patterns. And I'm here, I'm here for it. You know, how much, I'd rather put the money to the fabric itself and you should do that. <laughs> so let me, uh, let me go ahead and take you over to, um, first I'm gonna just show you the, um, the Andover quilt pattern. And uh, it's actually, they call it fireworks um, because that is the line of fabric that they chose. And so you just, uh, the link's in the show notes, but you can um, just jump and download, it's a PDF. And there we go. So we have the uh, fireworks, what there, but the act, and that's, um, the, the fabric line is by Renee Nanaman. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Uh, she's the fabric designer that came up with this palette and the actual design of the pattern itself is another uh, another person. Her name is Janet Miller. So the quilt, um, and she calls it wind socks. So that's what I've called it. So I'm gonna bounce out of um, I'm gonna bounce out of there and go to uh, Adobe and see if I can. Maybe not. I'm gonna go to Adobe and see if I can bring up the pattern a lot easier. And let's look for uh, wind socks. Do I have it? Do I have it? Have it? No, of course I don't. I'm going to go back to Chrome because that it was already open. Uh, bop, bop, bop. There we go. All right. So in this pattern, um, the way I'm going to have you um, just think about this is that first the overall size is going to be 58 inches square. That's going to be a very, they're calling this a wall hanging, but I think it is a very generous wall hanging. Um, so if you wanted to, you could actually add some, uh, some borders and then just make this a generous, uh, lap quilt. And I think it's really, really cute. And her version actually uses I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. Her version uses 12 different fabrics uh, for her line. And actually, I think I came up with maybe seven. I, I, I dumbed it down a little bit. And for me, um, I went with Uncorked by Wyndham Fabrics. And I absolutely love it. So. I was taking a look. I'm, let me maybe show you the down shot. I was uh, looking at the the uncorked, and I thought, you know what? I've never actually touched a real firework, <laughs> but I imagine that it has to be in some kind of cardboard construction. And I was like, when I was thinking about just like what the anatomy of a firework is, I thought this cork um, fabric would really, really play nice. And then I loved it so much that I thought, well, you know, instead of doing, um, instead of doing all of the the bodies for the, the fireworks in two different colors. So you have one color for the center one, the longest one, and then you have two. So it's kind of every other, but there's two bodies. I was like, you know what? I love this fabric so much. Why don't I just use this cork and gang, you know what? I was so thrilled because I just had enough <laughs> because uh, the, the pattern is actually calling for uh, some yardage that I was like sweating to know whether or not I was going to um, I was going to have it. But luckily I did. So that's um, the body is the is the more natural wooden color that I chose. And I know that maybe cardboard might be a little bit more a deeper brown, but I was like, you know what? I want this to be bright and cheery. So I'm taking some artistic liberty. But I do love the uncorked line so much because in the in the line itself, you can see here in the, in this is the red, and what's lovely is that it's just got some little flecks of gold in there, and then you also have this blue. So between my red, I'm going to have some red, white, and blue. Uh, so that's how I'm going to design my streams of fireworks. So in the original design, they have. Um, 
they have the red and then actually the way they did this was kind of interesting is that they took the main color here and then that was the body for these three pieces but then they started alternating and reusing this gold color um, in the the streams of the fireworks and I thought that's a lot and also that's why they were calling for so much uh, fabric just by saying you know what I'm switching it up and I'm gonna have some red white and blue um, some streams going through I was able to dip into my uncorked line and actually make the pattern work I was telling some friends last night that I was like, geez, you know, I feel like um, I'm always playing pinball, you know, when you're hitting and the ball is just going every which way. And that's where I feel I kind of go. I go into that space when I'm looking at my fabric stash and I'm looking at a pattern and then it's like you're constantly backing, um, backing forth, trying to figure out what do I have versus what do I need versus what do I want? <laughs> so I was really, I was really pleased uh, that I have this uncorked. Now for my stars, and if, just to remind you here, again, with the stars, I'm going to uh, first search and find my AccuQuilt star die because I actually have one and I, I can't find it. And I'm like, what did I do with it? And Aaron and I today, we were, we were both, um, <laughs> we were both searching high and low for my die. But I mean, like I have, I have this die. And so in the process, I actually found a book I was looking for and a couple of other patterns I had missed, um, misplaced. So I'm like, I think this weekend uh, to celebrate National Quilting Month and National Quilting Day, I'm gonna clean my area and like make sure that I can start finding stuff again. But for those stars, I'm gonna alternate and not just have one color blue. So you see on the on this down shot, they're actually using um, pretty much one color blue for, and am I looking at this? It almost looks, I don't know whether that was a color, um, a color difference or what have you, but this one looks really, really bright. But I believe all of these stars, they're, they're recommending to have the same color, but no, that doesn't work. I mean, that's like pfft, boring. So I'm going to actually mix mine up with some silver in that cart cork. And again, it has some of those gold flecks in it. And then I'm going to have other stars that are more in a, um, a real bright. It, it's got some midnight blue and some navy blue. And it's really, really pretty. Um, you can see that there's different shades in there, and I just think that would be gorgeous uh, between these two. That would be gorgeous for my stars, and I think it's going to turn out great. And it's an interesting. It's like when you're making a design decision and you're deciding, hey, you know, like what fabric, what really looks good. Um, I, I apologize because I can't remember who I was talking to, but oftentimes... Um, when you're looking at uh, a fabric, I kind of uh, uh, um, equate that with a design principle. So like if you're building a website or if you're building any kind of um, uh, like a PDF or some kind of instructions, you really want to think in like um, not only a grid system, but you think of like, hey, if, it's, if you're um, maybe a foot, three foot, 10 foot, what is, what is it that you can actually see the difference in um, between the different elements that you're, that you're putting into your, we're gonna put it in this place, in your quilt. So, and what I mean by that, this is a really good example. I love this pattern idea that they came up with, but for me, my one critique, that, and maybe using this as a good example of where you have two different shades of gold there isn't a big enough difference in my eye to make a difference. So if you're really looking for, if, if you're going to have two elements that are so close that it's hard to, to discern the difference between them, you might as well just go with one, which is what I did. If, you're, if, you're, if there's going to be a difference, make it big enough that at that three foot level or that 10, uh, 10 foot distance or even 20 feet away because if you're at a quilt show you may see things and maybe only able to get 
too close to the quilt, no more than 20 feet. Uh, and I know that there's people that will actually go right up close to it. And maybe that's when, and those are the audience that might see the difference. But, you know, think about the, the, the midpoint, maybe the, the six to nine feet distance. And we're all familiar with six feet distance. Um, think about, you know, how do things play? You know, not only in color, but also in scale. So that would be a, a really good tip that I could afford. And that's one of the rules that I kind of try to uh, apply to my design. So um, we've got our fabric and let's go back to, uh, let's go back to the pattern itself. And where did you go? Here you are, lovely. All right, so we've got the pattern itself. And then just like visually breaking this, this story down, we can really clearly see, and I love, actually, let me point out one thing that I really, really love is that in the, um, in this diagram, and this is, I believe, this is only on page four. So when we're really looking at the directions, and I know I'm just scanning really quick, but this is the major first point that they're trying to visually break this quilt down for you. And I absolutely love the way that they've, they've done it. This tells me a couple of things. One is that this is going to be a lot of strip piecing, but if you look at it from corner, uh, upper left corner to the lower right corner, you can see that there's actual breaks. They've done the, the upper half, so uh, where it says C, maybe I can show you my mouse. So from here to here, they've left some white space, and that's to signify that, hey, this is going to end up being a unit, this is going to be a unit, this is a solid unit, this is going to be a unit and this is going to be another solid unit and they did that on the other the first half and then on the second half they just spliced everything together to give you the final out um, the output and i really think that it's like hey if i'm somebody and we're all there and we're all guilty of it a lot of us don't read patterns so to have something like this um, this diagram, it's like, oh, sign me up because I don't read. O oftentimes, when I, I, I can look at it and say, okay, what are my dimensions that I need to work with? And then from there, um, as long as I can kind of see it, I can, I, I pretty much, I can figure it out. Um, and this is one of those patterns that you can definitely say, okay, I know it's gonna be some strip piecing with the uh, the streamers here. And if I really took away these, these stars, that's gonna just be a huge piece. And once I have those two pieces, the streamer, uh, I'm sorry, the streamers, which is nothing but strip piecing, then those I'm gonna assemble to the big, uh, the big piece, the big um, just gold piece. I'm gonna make all of those assembled. And then from there, we, get, we start um, assembling those strips that we've made. And the only thing I haven't read yet um, and I haven't really gotten to is the stars. I'm not sure when they do those um, uh, as an applique, um, but I know that um, pretty much I know what I'm gonna be getting myself into. And I love it. They've even given you a little star template. So uh, if you're not using your AccuQuilt, um, then you can easily just cut one of these out, maybe on some, um, some cardstock and something a little bit more sturdy so that you can use that as your template. And I think there was like 12. So three, six, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There was 13 stars. So you're gonna need 13 of those. And I'm gonna break mine up into the blue and in that silver. So before we actually get sewing, I think, yep, we've got a hot iron. Ooh, that is very hot. <laughs> Jiminy crickets. I touched the little um, silicone pad that this was sitting on, and man, that thing is hot. Maybe I should turn this down a little bit. This is things on, it's on like Power Ranger. <laughs> All right, uh, before we get into any kind of sewing, I'd love to just check in on the room and see what I'm missing. Uh, <laughs> Susan, who's going to be in the uh, quilt along, I believe what she's saying is that she's going to be, um, it will be in the last place, uh, oh, what? It'll be in the last place to look? Oh, okay, so yeah, my star die that I've lost, um, yeah, it's going to be in the last place I look, good eye. <laughs> All right, and then... Um, 
<laughs> so Tracy is further getting on my case and she says, what? You don't do your homework or read the notes? Like Tracy, I'm not the only one. I know that you don't always read the pattern either. Uh, you're phenomenal at writing and showing people what to do, when to do it and how to do it. Um, but yeah, she, <laughs> She doesn't always read the directions either. So uh, my report is gonna have to say, could do better, she says. That's awful. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so everybody is getting really excited about the, the, uh, ad, the Compass Adventurers Quilt Along, and I'm actually totally in love. Uh, I don't remember if I told you, but you do get a discount over at robinlong.com. I'm sorry, robinruthdesigns.com. MCQA10 is the coupon code. Get 10% off your purchase through the uh, end of the March. So just do it, add to cart. All right, so we are, I think that is all. Um, yeah, I got a shh because I spoke the truth. <laughs> Tracy says shh. All right, so we're going to start out with um, talking about what this, what this is. And going back one last time before we get into this, uh, one thing that I love is that their cutting instructions, um, it's telling you a couple of things here. We, so we have colors A, B, and C pointed out here. Now, the red was not uh, pointed out in the pattern. I wish it was, because then um, as I'm assigning different colors to the um, to replace the ones that are here, it would have been a little bit more easy for me, but you know, que sera, sera. It, it'll be. Um, but what I love here is that the um, you, we have the C, the little corner, and obviously we're gonna have two of those. And then we have, um, we have the first strip, which is actually made up of two 16 inch items. So when I'm doing my strip piecing um, and cutting my fabric, I have, I'm, they've already pointed out that these are gonna be 18 inch wide strips. And then the length is, is given to me all the time. We have 16, 47, 31, 77, 42, and then it goes back down um, in succession. So it really is, is simplified in just, that's the power of visualization uh, and visual, visual data telling. I just, I love and respect when people can do it like that, simplifying it uh, for all those instructions. But the way I've grouped, or I should say not but, I should say and, the way that I broke this down on my sewing desk is a couple of different ways. So I forgot to show you guys, I'm using um, connecting threads denim color for the background for my blue. And I just loved it because it's, um, when I'm even thinking about like the stars, everything just plays really, really nice with this denim blue. And I also have uh, um, each of the pieces, so for the stripes, when we're looking at the blue stripes, uh, solid stripes that go in between the rockets uh, or the wind socks, those are going to be at 47 inch, 77 inch, and then I guess another 47, and then what is it? Uh, 47, 77, 47. Oh, I'm sorry, there's two 77s of 47. Yeah, so all I had to do is look at that and then I've got those. So I've got those already pre-cut and then I broke down my windsock widths, which I have broken down into, if you can read my chicken scratch, we have the 42 inch, I have a 16 inch and I also have a 31 inch. So if I'm, if I'm thinking about that, I only needed one of the, the long one at 42 inches. I need two of the 31 and I needed two of the 16. So I've got those. And then I did the same thing. I've got piles for my, um, for my streams. And so again, we're at 42 inch, we've got 31 inch and 16 inch, easy breezy. So now I get to have some fun and just do some strip piecing. And let's see, yeah, I turned the iron down and it's, it's still like, whew. 
Um, I know that Stuart has the Aliso. Man, if you're looking for a great travel iron or a little small project iron, those puppies are awesome. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna, um, actually I, th I thought I would work on the 16 inch at first. Just go in small and then I can always work my way up into the, the longer strips and that's gonna work in my favor just because, again, the first time I'm sewing, um, I wanna take, make sure that I'm having that, that uh, straight seam that I'm gonna be working with that I need and then it would be better served if I do the smaller pieces and then as I gain more muscle memory, then I can go into those bigger pieces. So we're going to start on that. And I would love to know in the comments what project that you are working on as, uh, as you're tuning in. What are you working? I don't want to hear knitting. <laughs> I tease you guys so bad. All right. So for my, uh, for my design, I was thinking that the 16, so this is the small one I'm gonna work on. This is the strip that I need to have uh, those. And one of the design decisions that I'm making is that all of these don't have to be exactly the same in the order that I do the, um, the, the color placement. I think what for me that would make me really happy instead of doing a carbon copy of each stream, uh, just because of knowing that I'm excuse me, I'm going to have the windsock itself. I'm going to have um, all the same color. So I want to have some, a little bit of difference, but I'm still, I like this, that this is going to be very symmetrical. And so I think this is going to be one that is um, maybe a red, two whites, and then two blues. And then maybe I could go to alternate and say, okay, for this one, I might do the blue in the center and then have white and then the red. And then for the outer ones, I was thinking, well, why not do white as the center, do two reds and then two, two blues. So just working way out. All, uh, so basically that's one, two, three different ones that I'm gonna create just to make it all symmetrical, if that makes sense. So if I know that I'm gonna do the 16 inch first, I'm gonna grab those and if memory serves right, when I was cutting these out, I decided that I was going to, um, I was going to not cut them all the way. I think I cut the red ones to the 16. I did. So that's good. So I'm going to need actually four of those. And I hope I cut them. I was doing some last minute. And if not, I'm going to work on, actually, I'm going to make those red. So I'm going to do, um, I need a red for the right side as the center. I'm gonna do a red for the center on the left side. So I'm working on these two pieces and just arranging my fabrics. And then um, I need two of these at 16 inch. So I'm gonna cut these in half. That was one. And how long are these? Let me get these other ones out of the way so I don't confuse myself, as I often do. Okay, so we have this one is at 16. So I actually just need to cut this as is, and that's good. Bueno. All right, so we're going to have two there. And then we're going to have blue. And we're going to have two blue. So I think these are also 16. They are. And there's that. So this is going to be one of the, and I think those are so, so pretty. So if I'm working on these, then the next thing, you, as you probably have guessed, we're going to do some um, some chain piecing, and I apologize, let me get these into, into frame. There we go, that might be helpful. So this is gonna be the outermost, the outermost one that we're working with here. So I have the red as the center, then I've got two, and then I've got these. 
And it sounds like Angel was quilting on her long arm, and now she's uh, sewing quilt blocks together on the coloring book quilt. Angel is always, always busy. All right, so I'm going to take you to the needle. And I'm not sure what's going on with my thread here. There we go. Okay. Now, with this cork fabric, there is definitely a right side and a wrong side. So you can see that definitely you need to make sure. And I love it. it this one's pretty easy breezy. You can definitely tell um, which is which. Okay, so I've done those two. Then I'm gonna go to the other ones that uh, look just like this one. Uh, where's my knee lift? There we go. Okay, had to find my guillotine, my little thread color. And I, although I could, um, I could go ahead and keep sewing, but because these are all going to need to be very, very straight, I don't feel um, that I really want to press all at, um, all at once. I'd rather go into the, uh, the step and make sure that as I'm introducing each row, everything is already um, nice and straight from the get-go. I find that when I've got too many existing um, rows that I'm, that I'm pieced together and I'm trying to give myself some stripes, my stripes end up being a little wavy because I'm trying to work on more than one seam at a time. So this is the one that it really, uh, the colors are so contrasting that I just feel like I'd rather um, just take my time and do my, my straight piecing seams much, much better. So we've got that and I think it's gonna be killer. Again, pressing to the dark side. Now, a uh, question for you, is there anybody who is actually has been or will be celebrating in National Quilt Month? Uh, AccuQuilt had us do, um, or asked us to do, so for the, um, for the go-getters that we did, uh, we, we helped make a TikTok video. <laughs> so if you check out uh, AccuQuilt's um, TikTok page, you can see that uh, they, they had us go-getters telling everybody, hey, well, what does quilting mean to you? 
and it really turned into a really nice montage of uh, just the way that people think about quilting, which actually brings me to you. Um, like, what does quilting mean to you? So if you, um, if you have a look over at the, at the TikTok, you can kind of get an idea of like, from different, different quilters' perspective, like, what does quilting mean? What does it do for you? Why do you quilt? And I would love to know, like, don't even put it in the chat, in the live chat, put it in, in the comments. Um, I'd love for people to be able to see what you, what you think and like, tell me, what is, tell everybody, what does quilting mean to you? It's funny, uh, um, you guys know that I'm one of those people that, I mean, like, I love, I have a quilting identity, I think. When I'm not at work, I am busy quilting. I am, if I'm not, if I'm not thinking about quilting, or I'm sorry, if I'm not actually quilting, I'm researching and I'm, I'm like getting inspiration and trying to learn new techniques. I just, it's just so many different ways uh, that you can get caught down into a lovely rabbit hole. It is a stress reliever to me. It is an amazing place that I have met uh, and made friends. And when I started, um, when I started sewing 2000, 15 or 16, something like that. Um, I didn't know anybody and I didn't, you know, I didn't think, hey, there's nobody that looks like me. <laughs> there's no, you know what it is. And it, it's just, I felt like, oh my gosh, you know, this is pretty intimidating. And now that I've, um, you know, I've been at it for a while, it's just, it's so lovely that, you know, I feel like I've found my tribe and I love you guys. <laughs> I think that we need to drink on that. <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna go back to the needle. So this streamer, and I really do believe that there's really, there's really no surprises with this um, with this make, which is nice. And I have never had a um, many holiday quilts. I think I might be similar to a lot of people that I start out with, um, you know, more of a, a Christmassy quilt. But it's nice to actually have. Maybe you have the St. Patty's Day. Maybe you have an Easter. Maybe you have a Fourth of July, Mother's Day, all of it. I think it's a really uh, nice way to, you know, just add the, you know, hey, something different's going on in the year. All right, so I'm totally digging it. And I'm gonna um, get rid of that jumper. And I think I'm gonna press out. Now, the nice thing about this too is that there aren't a whole heck of a lot of seams throughout this pattern that need to match up. I mean, like if you're looking for an easy project, this one definitely it will serve that purpose. You know, if you're not looking for something that is totally, totally gonna rack your brains and uh, challenge every amount of patience and knowledge that you have, this, is, <laughs> this might be the one. All right, so now this is gonna be the first one and I love it. Anytime there's a sachet, you know, a sash, I just need this <laughs> and I need my, 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 my little crown. But like, I think it really, I love this. It's very uh, poppy and let's go down wide and you can see maybe we can go tight. There we go. So we have this lovely sash and what I love is that these, uh, it just has little sparkles in it and it'll just, you know, catch the light, and I think it's really pretty. Um, now, I'm, I know that this is not like a really, this is a, more of a heavier, heavier uh, red, but I'm still, still in love with it. Had I had 
Uh, had Uncorked made something that was a little bit uh, brighter, I probably would have gone for it, but I'm still absolutely in love with this. So once you've made this, um, and these are actually, I should have said, these are two inch um, strips that I've cut. And so that would bring us to 10 inches. Uh, so if I was doing two, 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 that's 10 inches, but then we have our quarter inch seams that we've sewn, which brings us back down to the eight inch. So now if I have my um, 16, so I'm gonna go over to my windsock body, and this is cut at eight inch, and this should actually just pair up nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that together. And I think we're rocking and rolling. And I think I'm going to try. I, I can't promise anything, but I think I'm going to try to finish this this weekend because I've got so much going on this week that I would love to just say, hey, Instagram, happy quilting month. Here's what I made. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I, I, I messed up. I started sewing these adjacent instead of like this. Hmm. See, but I, I was only held, I was only one inch in and I caught it. Woo, I dodged a bullet on that one. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna actually leave my seams to the top. There we go. You guys know how that is. Oh, I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, actually press towards the windsock body and we are cracking. Get it, firecracker? But there's the little windsock body. I mean, how long did that take? Just a little bit? So that is gonna be the 16 inch. And if I look at the, um, the firecracker itself. So I have this as the 16 inch and this will be the first, the first one right here. So I'm going to have two of these that are going to be identical. And then I'm going to take some stars that will be in either the blue or this nice lovely silver and make stars of this once I can find my AccuQuilt, but um, my die. But I think that's really going to be absolutely really, really cute. What do you guys think? All right, let me go back to the room. And believe it or not, that was all the sewing I really needed to do uh, just to get us going on this. Um, but yeah, let me go back to the room and see what I have been missing. So uh, Susan Shady, and that's the, Susan. Uh, I love the alliteration, like I'm a CC and you're an SS, but I love it. Uh, do you long arm? I do have a long arm and I have uh, some long arm friends who are Angel. We have, um, we have Tracy, we have Emma. There are plenty of people that uh, that do long army and they are actually in carry over at the Creative uh, Obsession. And Jesse, Jesse, if you um, want somebody else to do it, you could always uh, get to uh, hook up with Jesse and 
he, he does it as a service. Me, I'm not comfortable doing other people's uh, quilts just yet because I'm still learning. I am like, I'm, I'm quite confident where I am here on my domestic machine. And I think I've got my long arm uh, a little more than a year ago and no, almost a year and a half ago. And I'm still like, I still have many things in the queue just because I get, uh, to be all honest, I get nervous. And you know, like I always get afraid of, of failure and I have to get over that. 20, you know, 2022, I have to get over that. <laughs> So, all right. So, um, so Tracy, she said she loves it and it could work for a UK quilt. It could work for an Aussie quilt. Um, Fizz, she says it, she loves the fabric and yeah, Diane says, yeah, the, the fabric makes it. So I couldn't agree more. And I think everybody else... <laughs> Oh, Tracy was so nice. Uh, she put and I'll, I'll have to put this into the uh, into the show notes. But she also gave us the TikTok link. She, one of my lovely moderators, uh, she said that uh, she's showing you where to go check it out. What does quilting mean to you? So maybe that's a great place to stop here for today and just you know again. Happy, uh, happy National Quilting Day, everybody. Um, I want you guys to celebrate it. Do some sewing, do some quilting. Hang your quilt out outside your house, take a picture on it, put it on Instagram. Um, give a quilt, you could do that, but you know, just celebrate that we are all, all artisans and we have a shared love for all things that are soft and cuddly and just enjoy the weekend. I hope to see you guys next weekend, next Saturday. We're going to be on as usual. And in the meantime, be good to yourself. There's enough nonsense going on in the world and we need to take care of each other. So thanks for joining in. I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you soon.